10 things you need to know about Chrome OS before purchasing a Chromebook. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we help seniors understand technology and help them make right decisions about computer purchasing. And today I want to talk about 10 things that you should be aware about before purchasing a Chromebook. Now, I'm a passionate user of Chromebooks and have been since they first came out and were available commercially. So my partner and I from Tech for Senior, Hugh Poplick, uh, we ran a learning Chromebook series for three years. We did it every month. And I'll put the link down below because there's still some good videos in that series that I think you might enjoy if you're purchasing a Chromebook. I, of course, am a very passionate user of Chromebooks and bought a Samsung Chromebook when they first came out and were available commercially. Today, my goal is to talk a little bit about Chrome OS and give you some guidance if you are looking at purchasing a Chromebook. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention is Chrome OS. What is Chrome OS? Well, the word Chrome, it's not Chrome Space Operating System OS. It's actually one word. It's Chrome, C-H-R-O-M-E, OS, and it's trademarked by Google as the operating system that runs a Chromebook. So when we talk about Chrome OS, we're talking about the operating system that runs a Chromebook. <laughs> now, this is a slide I call an oldie, but a goodie. This is one of my very first slides I made when I started teaching Chromebooks, and I made it in PowerPoint. You'll see that the Windows operating system is characterized by a big semi-truck with a lot of trailers on the back. You'll see that Mac is the same, but at the bottom here, you'll see that we have a Mazda Miata, which is a fast little sports car, and this is what I would cons consider the Chrome OS. Let's go back and think about this from the very beginning. In 1976, I graduated from medical school. There were no computers or PCs at that time. I remember probably in about 78, I went on a holiday with a friend of mine who brought a luggable PC. Remember those luggable PCs? Right. And in 1982-83, I did something that nobody else had done before in our area. I actually put a PC in a medical clinic. Now, these were PCs at that time were standalone units. Microsoft had just come out and we're desperately trying to make software all work together. There was no internet. There was no email. That didn't come till over 10 years later. So there was a period of time here where the Mac operating system and Windows operating system developed long before the internet. Now you'll remember the fateful release of Windows 95. Yes, Windows 95 had a piece of software in there called Internet Explorer. You got a free browser included in your Windows operating system that would allow you to connect to the internet. This, of course, was a massive disaster on a number of fronts, but the first was viruses. We'd never had viruses. Nobody knew anything about it. And now we had a flood of problems. Now, over the next 20 years, Windows, Microsoft would spend billions of dollars and 20 years of development to try and make Internet Explorer safe for you to use on the Internet. And they never, never did manage that task. And thankfully, it is in history. Internet Explorer is something we remember in the back of our minds, a bad thing, and it's never going to resurface because it was not possible. It was written in an era where, of course, we didn't have the same threats as we do today. So part of what I'm trying to say is, is that there's a lot of historical stuff in those two great big huge trucks back there those companies have to deal with. Those are legacy systems. We call them legacy. Just about 15 years ago, Google decided to write Chrome OS. Now, this was a modern day software, and you know how it came into effect. Well, let me tell you. 
Uh, there was a theory about 20, 25 years ago that in, in the United States, in the primary education system, is that you had to have an iPad to teach children. If you didn't, you would never teach them correctly. And this theory caused lots of problems for the school districts. They had to purchase a large number of iPads, and they were expensive. And this caused tremendous financial hardship in the U.S. school public school system. And Chrome decided they could build a computer that would be far cheaper. So they designed a Chromebook. They designed the Chrome operating system. And of course, it was a modern day operating system that had been written for all the perils that were there today. It wasn't a legacy system like the other ones we talked about. It is a modern day operating system. And it was designed for kids on the internet. Now, let me think, how many ways could kids get into problems on the internet? So it was designed with massive security there. Yeah, and it uh, it was very successful. Chromebooks, of course, instantly were adopted into the US school system and there for about six or seven years before they were finally uh, released for the consumer market. So it just going back to this slide for a minute, that's the portrayal here is that the Chrome operating system is a tiny itty, itty bitty little operating system. It goes very fast and is very efficient. All right, let's talk a little bit about security. I, I mentioned that with kids in school and connected to the internet, we have to have something that's very secure. So many of you are thinking about Chromebooks and you're coming from a PC background where you've had antivirus software or malware. None of this is required with the Chrome operating system. This is all built into the operating system and there's nothing you have to do. In fact, you'll never see antivirus or malware on your Chromebook. It is all built in and part of the operating system and it gets updated regularly and to keep you safe. So you can forget about all that. There's nothing you have to do for security. Oh, and you know something that's sort of funny? Many of you are watching this because you can't upgrade your Windows machine. The hardware won't let you update to Windows 11. And that's because you need a little chip called a TPM chip. Now the TPM chip is actually a great chip and it's good for security. And I think it's great that Microsoft is actually doing this. But you know something? Chromebooks had TPM chips since the very inception. It's one of the cornerstones of their security. It took Microsoft 20 years to figure this out. Anyway, Chromebooks have always had a TPM chip. So when you go to bed at night and you turn your computer off, the gremlins work all night and make sure that you're, six, you're safe. And when you turn your computer on in the morning, you don't even know it, but it's been updated and everything is going to work fine for you. In actual fact, there's two copies of Chrome OS. There's a primary and a secondary copy, and it's the secondary copy that gets updated all the time. And when you go to bed, it switches the copies. So that works very well and keeps you secure. And you never get bugged about updates in the middle of your presentation. Works great and will keep you safe. So let's talk about the Chrome browser. The Chrome, brow the Chrome browser is used today by about 85% of the PC users in the world today. It is uh, successful because of the problems we had with Internet Explorer. People left that uh, piece of software many, many years ago and moved to something that a modern day browser, uh, of course, that Google wrote called Chrome. Now, I suspect most of you are familiar with this. Some of you may even use Google Drive now and use some of the other features associated with uh, Google's products. Well, the Chrome browser is integrated into the Chrome OS. In other words, it is part of the operating system. So you cannot uninstall or delete the Chrome browser. You have to think of the Chrome browser when you're thinking about Chrome OS is it's all one. It's part of the same thing. When you start to use Chrome OS, 
you'll be very familiar with all the features because essentially it is your Chrome browser. Now within the Chrome browser, you can certainly change your search engine and you can use Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, or Bing. So you can change that. You cannot delete the Chrome browser. Now you can use other browsers as apps on top of Chrome OS. That's certainly possible. If you're very paranoid and you just can't deal with the Chrome browser and you definitely want to use something different, then Chromebooks probably aren't for you and you should move on to something else. All right, let's talk a little bit about Chrome OS and the integration with Google Drive. Well, the concept of a Chromebook is that most of the stuff done on a Chromebook is going to be done in the cloud. In other words, you're connected to the internet and it is integrated tightly with Google Drive. Now you can use Microsoft products and OneDrive, but the concept of a Chromebook is that it is tightly integrated with Google Drive and Google Drive, of course, is in the cloud. So Chromebooks really don't require a large hard drive because the storage, of course, uh, of your information is mostly going to be in the cloud and not on your Chromebook. This makes it very easy and cheaper to produce Chromebooks because you don't need a lot of resources to store your information. Now, the common question I get asked, can you use a Chromebook if you're not connected to the internet? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. Uh, whether you're using Gmail, Google Drive, or any of the services uh, that you have on a Chromebook, there is an offline feature. So you can take, for example, Gmail and you can run Gmail offline. You may be on an airplane or traveling or on holidays. And yes, you can answer your email, write email. And when you connect back to the internet, of course, this information will be synced and uploaded to the World Wide Web. But I have one caution for you. Chromebooks really work well if you are connected to the internet and if you live in an area where your internet connection is very spotty, it's not good, and you have problem connecting, then Chromebooks probably aren't going to be for you. You don't need a high-speed in internet connection. You don't even need a fast connection. You just need a reliable connection for your Chromebook to work well for day-to-day -day activity. Now, a friend of mine wrote me an email the other day and in the email was discussing computer issues and mentioned that Chromebooks were generally an underpowered device. If you ever wanted to go out in the street and just scream in the sky, you all have got it wrong. And of course, saying that Chromebooks are underpowered is not true at all. And in fact, my Chromebook has a Ryzen chip in it and it's blazing speed. It's much faster than my $4,000 Dell studio that I have in my office here. So Chromebooks are extremely fast and a complete replacement for 98% of the people that want to replace their PC. Work just fine and you'll have lots of speed and it will be very fast. But you know, you can go and you can buy a Chromebook online for $99. Yes, there are many different companies that make Chromebooks and they make them with all sorts of specifications. And yes, a five-year-old in a school classroom needs a very needs a low-budget Chromebook. Would you be happy with a $99 Chromebook that was built for a grade five student? Probably not. So it gets very complicated because there are so many different models out there. But fortunately, two years ago, Google had came up with a new designation, and that is called a Chromebook Plus. Now, a Chromebook Plus is a Chromebook that's built for specifications that would be equal to a, a PC that you might have. So when you go and you are shopping for a Chromebook, and if you are looking for a replacement for your PC, look for a Chromebook Plus designation. If you go to Best Buy, go and say, you just want to see Chromebook Plus models. The Chromebook Plus designation means that it has a minimum standard of hardware in there that would be equal to or even better than a PC. It makes it very easy when you're doing shopping. So I would recommend you watch for that Chromebook Plus 
designation. It'll be on the box and it'll be very obvious now uh, that it is a Chromebook Plus. So watch for that. Now, another great thing about Chrome OS is the compatibility with apps in the Play Store. You'll find that when you get your Chromebook and open it up, you'll see there's an icon there that says Play Store. And that's going to take you to the same place where you get your Android apps for your phone. In fact, most of the Android apps on your phone will, of course, work on your Chromebook because the apps are all compatible with Chrome OS. Works really well. It's neat. Snapdragon is one of the ones I use for editing Google Photos pictures, and it, it's always hard using it on a small screen on my phone. I love it on my Chromebook because you can use it in a full screen. Great product, Play Store compatible. All right, so for those of you who are adventuresome, you can run Linux on a Chromebook. There actually is an option in the Chrome OS to install Linux. You just click the button, it'll automatically install for you. Now, it's a little bit different in that Linux runs as a container within the Chrome OS. So you actually are not running one or the other, you're running both of them. And you can have, of course, uh, one of your apps from the Chrome OS running at the same time as you have an app running in Linux. They run at the same, the same time and you can interchange the information. So about, about, about six years ago, I made a video called It's Only a Chromebook, and I'll put the link in the description below. And in the video, I had uh, three apps running, and the first was using Google Docs. It was using Google Drive, of course, on my Chromebook, and that was running in the Chrome OS. I then was using a Microsoft product called Microsoft Word, and I had Word running. And then the third one, I had Firefox running, but that was running in Linux. And there, so the three apps were on my Chromebook and you could click one, you could move, move freely between each of those programs. I titled it, It's Only a Chromebook. I'll put the link down below. So it is something that is available for you if you are a Linux buff and you want to try this and use it on a Chromebook, it works great. So people often talk about the exceptional battery life you get on Chromebooks and you do. But I also wanted to remind everyone about a Chrome box. You don't have to actually get a laptop. You can actually get a Chrome box, which is just a box with the Chrome operating system in it. And then you can plug uh, any of your peripherals into it. So it's the same things as uh, Windows um, NUC or the Apple Mini. We have a Chrome box, which is just the uh, peripheral. It, it's just a little thing you put in the palm of your hand, plug anything in there, and you've got your Chrome operating system using running it. So think about that. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the my talk on Chrome OS. I believe that a Chromebook in 2025 is a great alternative for your PC for about 98% of people. Consider that if you're looking at migrating from a Windows 10 PC to another option. And be sure and hit that like and subscribe and we'll notify you on any other videos coming out that we make at Tech for Senior. Have a great day. Bye now.